Hi, I'm Dan Passarelli of MarketTaker.com, here for CBOE TV. Last week, we talked about middling markets by using vertical spreads. Today, I'd like to follow up and discuss the idea of trading vertical spreads. When traders trade an opportunity they see in the market, they have lots of choices in how to trade it. They have options. Now, if a trader's bullish, that trader can simply go and buy a call. Conversely, that trader can also buy a call spread. Specifically, that would be called a bull call spread. So for the purpose of explaining vertical spreads, let's talk about exactly what a bull call spread is and how it contrasts from simply buying a call. Say the call I was thinking of buying was the October 50 call. I c maybe that call cost me $3. That means the most I could lose is $3, and I could have unlimited profit potential. But let's say I don't really need unlimited profit potential because I think the stock is just going to rise to a certain point. And let's say I'm a pretty conservative trader, and I'd like to minimize my potential risk and risk maybe less than $3 a share. Here's what I could do conversely. I could buy that same October 50 strike call for $3. But at the same time, sell the October 55 strike call for, say, $1.50. Now, I've only paid a total of $1.50. I paid $3 and I collected $1.50. So my total money at risk at this point would be only $1.50. So from a risk standpoint, the trade's better. However, there is a trade-off. I give something up to get that lower risk. And what I give up is potential upside. The long call has unlimited profit potential, but the vertical spread, this bull call spread, has limited profit potential. I can only make so much. Now specifically, in this example, I could make $3.50. That's because if the stock is above $55 a share at October expiration, I could exercise my 50 calls, thereby buying the stock at 50. I would get assigned on my 55 calls, thereby selling the stock at 55. That would net me $5. But I paid $1.50 for that spread. So my total potential profit would be only $3.50. Now that's still a reasonably leveraged profit in this example. So I'd have lower risk, still a leveraged profit, but if the stock rose to say 60, 65, 70, I would give up further upside potential. So when I am deciding between buying a call and trading a bull call spread, what I look at is resistance levels. If the stock is in a bullish trend and I think the stock is going to continue higher, but there are resistance levels above and I think the stock will get only up to those resistance levels, that's when I look at a bull call spread instead of buying a call. Because in those situations, I don't mind giving up the upside and I sure appreciate the more limited risk that those spreads offer. This is Dan Passarelli with Market Taker Mentoring, here for CBOE TV.